George here and today what I'd like to uh, do is present to you a video about acquisition uh, gain and acquisition loss and have a little discussion with respect to that little procedure and uh, starter kit as opposed to advanced squad leader. Now what inspired me uh, to do this video was a post by Jack R R H S on uh, Facebook where he um, presented a portion or a snippet of, of the rules and he said that um, it's as if the author finally got exhausted after writing the first sentence and realized he needed to cut it off somewhere. So translating from boomer to zoomer language essentially what he was saying is this rule is ass. Oops. Oh well. Now this video is not about whether the rule could have been written better or not and I'm not making any apologies for anybody. I, I simply see the need to, uh, to, that there is a need for people to understand acquisition better, acquisition gain and loss. And to be honest with you, I'm not an expert. I'm still learning about acquisition gain and loss. And as a matter of fact, I learned a couple of things just a few weeks ago in playing advanced squad leader with respect to acquisition and loss. And maybe if I do this video, it will reinforce my own uh, knowledge. So let's take a look with no further ado, the actual rule and uh, what I am uh, what I'm, uh, I'm putting on the screen now is the PDF, uh, uh, the PDF rule book that uh, MMP has on their site readily available for download. And we're talking about rule 610 in the starter kit. When a gun main armament makes a two hit dice, dice roll with two dice using the infantry target type or vehicle target type, it may place a half inch minus one acquired target counter on its target and flip it to uh, from a minus one to a minus two side when it does a subsequent roll. Uh, this acquired target counter applies a, as a two hit DRM for subsequent shots by the ordnance weapon. Um, now, a target can be acquired by more than one weapon, but never more than a minus two level. The target remains acquired until the weapon or its manning infantry uh, leaves its present location, changes covered arc without firing, attacks a different target, malfunctions, fire smokes, uses IFE, or until its manning infantry is eliminated, is not in good order, no longer possesses the weapon, fires its inherent firepower, uses interdiction, or an AFV fires its CMG at a different target, or until the target leaves the loss after entering a new hex. However, in the last case, uh, the last hex the target was in prior to leaving its loss will retain the acquisition. If another enemy unit moves, enters that hex, it then receives an acquisition change the half inch uh, acquired target counter to a 5 eighths counter if the gun main arm fires at the target using the area target type. Well, uh, here I, I see a list of situations um, uh, where the uh, acquisition will be lost and if any everything else stays the same, it will be acquired. I, I don't see any other way of, of expressing that really. And it is a complicated game. And if we want to play a simple game, we have Axis and Allies and Memoir 44. Uh, I think without the complexity, Starter Kit or even ASL would lose its flavor and some of the detail. Now I see the need to put on a, a thinking cap. So here's my Grizzlies cap, I'll put it on. If a stack of acquired units scatter and enter different hexes, the fire may retain a half-inch acquired target of this choice on one of the previous acquired targets. Now, I'm literally rereading the rule, and what I'd rather do is just paraphrase and uh, discuss a few things and give you an example, and maybe that would help. The way I phrased it on Facebook was, guys, sit down with a nice, um, with a nice, um, gray earl tea, right? Um, or if you prefer, well, no, don't, I wouldn't recommend any uh, booze in this instance. You need a little perk, either coffee, which is what I'm, I'm drinking, you know, coffee, Nescafe, uh, One Splenda, 
two creams, right? Or a, a nicer old gray. And you just read the, the book casually and, and play a little example of it and just reinforce everything. Now, before we go to the, the example, um, generally speaking, there's three things that you have to keep in mind before you, you tackle that acquisition encounter. So basically, you need to know the two-hit procedure, and there's it's a three-step process, more or less. So uh, first and foremost, you need to determine your target type. Are you firing at, at an infantry target, a vehicle, or area? Now, in the military, I was in charge of an anti-tank team as a corporal, and basically, this example that I'm going over is more or less the same procedure we followed in executing an order to our gunner to fire. You identify the target. What is it? Is it a squad of infantry? Is it uh, an armored fighting vehicle, tank, personnel carrier, jeep, whatever? Uh, then direction and distance, more or less in that order, if I remember everything correctly. So, determine the uh, target type. Then, determine the fire modifiers. What stands between you and the target? I, I, I guess you have to determine the range before that, but it, again, what is between you and the target is really important. And, and at times, when you identify where the target is, you even give them a geopolitical location. Left to that tree, 10 o'clock, and, and, and whatnot. Then you determine the uh, target modifiers before, because before you roll, you you really, and maybe mentally you have to, that should be your first step is to determine the modifiers because depending on the modifiers to your dice roll, you might not be able able to see them or it, the shot may not be worth it. Or the other situation that can arise is that um, if there are too many hindrances, but um, no, if the TEM is too high, forget the hindrances. If the TEM is too high, you might choose area target instead because the TEM will apply to the IFT. So, zip of coffee again. So my ABC process is determine the target type, fire modifiers, fire modifiers, and then target modifiers. Okay. So I guess with that, we can go to a little example. What I prepared here is a little scenario where uh, the, Soviet, the Soviets are, have to capture the headquarters building, which is, which is in Q6. And these folks are gonna slug it out. And there's uh, two types of ordnance, actually three types. You have the armored fighting vehicle, you have an AT gun, and you have a mortar, right? Now, what's what's the difference between this mortar and the AT gun is that this guy doesn't have a covered arc, so he can fire here, 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 depending on whether or not he has rate. Um, the LMG, believe it or not, can be also considered uh, 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 a ordnance weapon, especially if they're trying to take out uh, a tank. Now, here, here's the, the, the thing about uh, the tank and why as a tanker you should be worried about LMGs is that if you have a low armor factor, the LMG needs five to mobilize you and under five, if I I'm off the top of my head, to eliminate you. And uh, if he gets a turret hit, notice that, that, that in this case, his turret is weaker than the body it, the one the first one is circled that means he has zero armor in, in the turret which means he's vulnerable to LMG fire Ta -da! now let's play our little scenario and see if we get can get some examples uh, rolling here now we'll determine that there's only five turns but we won't play the full five turns but let's see who goes first um, 
I should I should make a, a point first. So we'll roll again. Even if the Soviets go first, or the uh, Germans go first, let's let's roll that. Even the Soviets uh, uh, roll first. All right, um, go first. So let's get a little phase marker as well. And the little phase marker would be in your counter tray. Uh, other uh, phase track. So we said that the uh, Soviet player turn is first. Rally phase prep fire. So he will try and see if he can acquire this dude over here. Let's see if we have LOS. So I determined my target is uh, that uh, the tank. We're in prep fire phase. There's two hindrances. And the range is 11. Great. So this is a 76L. We'll turn to our charts. And now we'll try to use the rat, not the rat charts, but the ASL combat charts. And these these charts are produced by Neil Uden at the um, at his site. And they're available for download. And in terms of quality, I cannot, um, I, I cannot say um, anything that can do justice, I, I suppose, to the, the immense amount of quality um, uh, and, and the effort that, the immense effort that uh, has gone into creating these charts. They're absolutely a, a highly recommended download. It, it, it is, in my words, uh, in my opinion, absolutely excellent. Excellent to have. Everything you need to know is really here. Now, a little word about the actual uh, actual uh, charts that come with the ASL starter kit. I only have ASL 1 to, to 3, starter kit 1 to 3. And um, I heard in decision of else they introduced a zero range, right? A zero range, whereas uh, here we've got range of 1. And then here we have a range of one. I thought I thought in, in decision of else there was also a zero range. Anyway, uh, so we know the fire is a 76L Russian, okay? And that's 12 firepower factors on the infantry target type. Uh, area target type is six, critical hit will be 24. All right, the range was 11. So we're looking at, at um, Let's see. We're looking at 76L here. Range of 11 is a 6 to hit. That's the infantry target type, but we want a vehicle target type. So here it would be a 8. So I, I cross-index the caliber of the gun on the, on the Russian nationality side. Here I, get, I got my target type. So I got a base of eight of range of seven to 12. Great. So to that, let's go back to our board. Now with my uh, memory skills, I already forgot the, uh, the two hit thingy, the two hit uh, base. Okay, eight, keep that in mind, oddball eight. Okay, so at that range, this target is, uh, uh, base A to hit, and then uh, to that, let's get our little notepad, A to hit, base 8, plus 1 for being buttoned up, that's my modifier, All right. and plus 2 for the hindrances, I have no choice but to hit on the vehicle target type. And my target is not in motion. He's not a small target. So there's no other modifier. So um, I need a base eight. I'm gonna add three to my dice roll. So that makes it a five to hit. Okie dokie. Let's roll on the two hit uh, uh, button. I rolled a six. Now, he prep fired, and I just acquired that target. I can intensify if I wish, but then 
I would have to add another plus two. Now, where do I get the modifiers from? Uh, let's look at the uh, beautiful charts that um, that uh, Neil created. And here are our fire base to hit modifiers. And then here are the target base to hit modifiers. So for the fire target modifiers, I'm not firing the advancing fire. I'm not pinned. I don't have non qualified. It's not captured. I'm not CX. Uh, armor leaders do not exist in starter kit, unfortunately. I'm not firing smoke. Uh, I didn't change my covered arc. I'm not intensive firing, but I know it off by heart that it's a plus two. Fire within two hex. Uh, if wooden buildings doubled, nope. Uh, APCR plus one at ranges over 13. Avoiding black bass buttoned up. I checked it. I'm not abounding first fire. I'm not stunned. I'm not in motion. And for the target based modifiers, I only had uh, a one per hindrance. Where's the one? Oh well. <laughs> no tem, because he's not in the, the target was not in woods or a building. Acquired target, which is will be the subsequent item that will come up. And then here you've got all the other stuff. Very easily found here, as opposed to um, uh, it's well, well, well documented and well written, uh, very accessible in terms of e easy to read. All right, so let's go back to um, here, and I'm going to label this. There's more than one ways to to link the um, the acquisition, but what I like to do is label my my fire as A, get an acquisition marker here. And this is a small ac because it's not area fire and label that one a so i know a it comes from a there you go he prep fired and he missed but now he has a minus one ac on this tank uh prep fire all right now we're going to do a mortar and mortars always fire an area target type the only thing they add to their uh dice roll are hindrances the tem is subsequently applied um uh, on the uh, IFT table. So in this case, he's one, two, three, four, five hexes away, no hindrances in the way. I am going, actually, this guy's a better target, but, um, but for one reason or another, I just picked this guy. All right, so we're gonna label mortar, uh, the mortar as mortar B. So this is a straight up seven to hit using target type and uh, we can look it up in the chart so uh, let's not take it for granted that you know it off by heart and I don't blah 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 here's my 50 uh, L he's only firing on area target type 7 not applicable 1 to 2 not applicable 21 plus let's see what's the minimum and maximum to this range minimum of 3 hexes so if this guy if this unit here, this leader were uh, were two hexes away, um, can fire three and over up to twenty. The mortar can fire at the target within a distance. The target has to be a distance of three hexes away, up to a maximum of twenty. That's what this little item here reads. So seven to hit. Let's let's try and hit. And remember, this unit's rate of fire is three. Now, so let's do it. Good. Got four, which means I don't have rate. But this guy actually hit. So now look at the IFT table. This is how I do it. Uh, he's a fifty mil. Let's go up, 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 fifty. So 50 mil is equivalent to six. It's area target, so half of six is three, goes to the two table. And that's that's how I do it. So it will be a two up three shot. Oh, uh, I see. All right, there's two different tables here. So a two up three shot, which is not pretty good because I got to roll at least a three to, to do any damage now. So let's roll on the uh, IFT. 
that's nothing, but now B gets an acquisition and it's a large acquisition. Uh, label B. And size, that means an area acquisition. Great, so he prep fired. What are my units going to do? We're going to we're going to start moving. All right, just so we can make it like a scenario type of event. So he will assault move underneath the tank. Like so, he will assault move to there. He will assault move to here. And we're going to call the defensive fire. Defensive fire. Now, my my overall strategy is to get into this cover here and try to attack Q6. Anywho, now I'm calling defensive fire, therefore it's his turn to fire, the German turns to fire, right? And this tank here is going to try and take out this tank here. Now, here's where things get interesting. This tanker, all right, can uh, call area fire. Uh, it actually gets interesting now. In advanced squad leader, to be honest with you, I would know exactly how to to fire this. Um, I would call a vehicle or target type, attack the tank, and if I ultimately got a hit on the tank and killed it, I would resolve. I would resolve the. Uh, the uh, fire, the outcome on the infantry fire uh, fire table with the same two kill dice roll to see how the infantry would react. Um, I'm not too sure what would happen if I said area fire. Area fire would actually affect uh, the entire hex. So I'm not too sure how it would work in in starter kit. That's an interesting dilemma. But let's fire on the vehicle or target type. Um, now, do I have a, a, a chance of, of killing the T-34 with the 37L? He has a weaker turret and he does have an armor factor of 11 and uh, on the two kill table Let's take a look at the two kill table. In starter kit. 37L. Gee, you got all the nationalities in here. Italians included. Two kill table, 37L. Um, and I have APCR. So I can declare an APCR shot, which is what I forgot that, well, it's it's about target app acquisition and, and uh, loss of, 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 uh, of acquisition. But I have an APCR shot and at the range of 11 I would need a 10 to kill otherwise it would be a 9 to kill and this dude uh, has a really high armor factor of 11 and the next target armor factor down would be an 8 so I would need probably a critical hit and if I had a critical hit that would make it a viable shot. Let's just say, for the sake of the example, use a vehicle or target type, just so we see how 
acquisition is acquired and how acquisition is lost. Right. So at 11 hexes away, 37L, let's go back to the German to hit table. And the beauty about starter kit is it already incorporates uh, the, penet the penetration factors in the two kill table. It already incorporates other factors that in, in advanced quadrature they're separate and you have to add them into factor them in after all is said and done. Let's go back here. Come on, Germans. PTO terrain. Ah, here we are. 37L, vehicular target type. 11 hexes away is a nine to hit. Uh, and to that nine, we have to add plus one for being buttoned up and plus two hindrances. And we determine the hindrances from the previous shot. So it's a six to hit. Six to hit from here to there. Okay, let's roll on a two hit table. Let's hope for snake eyes. Close. Now in this case, we hit, and what did we hit? The colored die is larger than the the um, uh, the uh, the colored die was a three. The white die was a one. It's a all hit. So unfortunately, we have eleven um, modify uh, eleven firepower factors, and, and we could have called it a PCR which would have given us a somewhat of a chance to, to kill, but it's a no can do. So if we go back to the charts, 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 now we've got a, a, a hit and we can add a, a, uh, a, a acquisition marker. Let's see how much we need to kill that tank. So 37L is here. At uh, that range, it's a nine. He has 11 firepower factors. Uh, even with a 10, we wouldn't be able to kill it. Let's take a little bit of other uh, information from the counter itself. And I did not keep rate because the rate of fire is two. Hmm. So basically, we do have an act though. A lot of good that will do us. And it's a small act, and we, call, we can call this act A. Label this fellow A. And label this dude, dude A. And we have an act. Now, he can also fire his uh, BCA. BCA is bow coax. And as you can see there, this coax is eight firepower factors. All right. So in order to retain his his um, his um, in order to retain his ac, he needs to fire his coax at the same target hex as he fired uh, before. He cannot fire at Zukov. But he can fire, certainly fire his, his bow there and his coax here. If it's the other way around, if he fires his coax to Azuka now, he will lose that act. Plain and simple. So let's do that. Let's fire our coax here at 8 up 2. 8 because there's two hindrances up 2 and see what that gives us. Nothing. And let's fire a two. Let's see how uh, we'll fire the bow at Zukov. And there's only one hindrance. So that's a two up one. So that's a five plus two is seven on the two. I don't think that's anything. No, it missed by one. So he final fired everything. Um, Great. 
Now, at least we'll we'll do this at least two turns so we can see uh, how uh, everything plays out in terms of acquisition, gain, and loss. So in this case here, um, Mr. 50L will fire here. So we'll declare infantry target type, take the range. There's one hindrance and the range is eight. Yep, range of eight and it's a 50L. Making little notes here. 50L, let's go back to the charts. 50L. That's the two kill table. Let's go to the German chart. Here it is, 50L, infantry target type, range of eight hexes is a seven, two hit. And add one hindrance makes it a six. So six to hit, let's do that. Uh, here's the good news, I did not hit but I got rate because my color dies one and he has a rate of fire of three. So let's call this dude B. Get him a, a small act, label it B. And we can roll again. So now um, I have base eight. Uh, plus one for the uh, hindrance, minus one for my act, makes it a pure eight to hit. So let's hit again. Ft to hit. That's eight, and I still have right. So I hit right at dead center. My act becomes a minus two. And now with a fifty L. I have a six even shot. And if you don't believe me, and you shouldn't, you should check things yourself. And double, after you watch this video, by all means, read the rules again. 50 millimeter is a six, goes on the six fire table. Let's roll on the two kill. And I got a six, ordinance doesn't cower. So six on the six is a one morale check. I need a six or less. He breaks. Let's say for all intents and purposes, we have an ELR of uh, four. Okay, he breaks. Now, he can choose to fire again at this unit. And in the advanced game, it's highly advisable not to because there is this thing called heat of battle, <laughs> which doesn't exist in Starry Kit. Or he can change targets but in which case he would have to start all over again with respect to acquisition um, because he has changed uh, targets. So let's say we do change targets. We're gonna target Zukov because we don't like Zukov. So let's target Zukov and let's go and check out the range and hindrances. Now, as you can see, now we've got a range of nine, right? And we've got three hindrances. And now we've got some math to do, so we've got some cath calculus to do. So at range of nine, let's go back to our chart, right? At a range of nine, a 50L on the, vehicle, on the infantry target type. 50L, infantry target type, range of nine, still would be a, a base seven. What did I get eight? All right, so 50L, range of nine is, oh yeah, the previous one was, all right, okay, I'm okay. So base seven. To that, 
I have three hindrances, so I would be at a four to hit. Um, I can alternatively try area target type, but it's still, the base would be still the same. And chances are I would not be able to get right on an area target type. Hmm. So I'm better off selecting infantry target type. So that's, that's the calculus that you have to do the alpha sig sigma lambda that you have to do when you are thinking about acquisition and gaining acquisition versus losing acquisition. So it having a, a, a nice rate, I will pick infantry target type, okay, infantry target type, base seven plus three to my hindrances. Uh, that would make it a four to hit. So let's go and roll in the two hit table. And guess what? I hit and got right, but now I lose acquisition here and it comes to there. And I start all over again. Minus one. Uh, and it's a six even shot. Yeah, I don't, I, I only factored in the hindrances in the uh, two kill, uh, on the two hit. So IFT six even. Nine is nothing. Missed by one. All right, so I had rate. Now calculating uh, my two hit, I have uh, base seven, as we determined before, three hindrances, right? Three hindrances. And now I, I also have a minus one act. So my dice roll modifiers are only two. So that makes it now a five to hit. So let's go ahead and hit. Things happen. This thing broke with my luck. <laughs> and guess what? That acquisition is lost. This is at the, the point where I, in live games I say darn, darn, double darn. But things happen. And he final fired. So now we can fire our infantry, I suppose. Um, let's see if we have line of sight from here to there. I'm committing, committing to firing. We do. So the tank still doesn't act as a, as a protection until after the advancing fire phase. So this fellow here, that range was eight. So we have a, a two up one shot. Let's take it. We wouldn't take it in the advanced game, but we would here. Six, seven, missed by one. He final fired. And from here to there, or actually here. Yeah. What is he? An 8 old leader? Jeez, what happened to all the good uh, leaders here? It's a uh, range of five. Hindrance is one. So we got here a uh, two and three. Makes it a four, up one. And that's a miss as well. All right, now we got advancing fire phase. Uh, this dude already prep fired. My squads can actually uh, fire uh, back at this dude. Uh, so they would be quartered because the range of these fellows is four and they each have an LMG. Hmm. So the LMGs would be half, that's a two. And then we would have another two for the squads, would make it a four up four, which is not a shot worth taking. So let's just go on to the route phase and clean up the board, like Good Samaritans, prep and death, all right. And this dude can, he did not break in open ground, so he, he can choose not to route. And the only reason why he would route is to get to rally terrain. So, um, and I think the closest cover, without getting any closer, would be this hex right here. Yeah. 
That's one and a half, three, four, five. And he can also go here, one and a half, three, four, five, into the woods and further away from everybody. And if he, if he moves away, uh, he has no chance of reacquiring uh, the mortar, but if this guy gets the beat on him and scores a K, he's gone. So we will, we will route him. Here, one and a half, three, four, five. Okay. And there's a shiny new mortar uh, there. Now notice the omission that I did. My little omission area is the moment he broke, he lost acquisition. So there's another example of using acquisition. Let's go on to the advanced phase. And there we go. We're going to advance. Uh, Zukov is going to advance underneath the tank. And this dude is going to advance here. So they're in line to get into this little uh, this little portion of the village and try to capture them by getting everybody out of the way. Hmm. All right, close combat. There isn't any. We can remove the moves and go to route, uh, rally phase. His... The only thing that happens in rally phase is, I guess, his uh, BM status comes off. And is there any other broken units? Yeah, let's try to repair that. And the repair should have been actually done first. And he's repaired. What luck. Uh, there we go. But he lost his act. All right, he's repaired. It's now uh, prep fire and... Uh, we're going to, uh, geez, I don't think we have any prep fire. Oh yeah, we do, here to there. Uh, at this point, the tank is not moving, so he does act as a, a some cover. It's range of six, so what we got there is a six up one, because Zukov is under the tank. Six up one, booing. Oh ho! The wrong tower is leader directed three, Three on the six table is a K slash two. So let's do some random selection leader versus squad. The squad is casualty reduced. We said a three is a K2. So let's uh, half squad this dude. Clone, put, the, uh, put one unit in the graveyard up here. May he rest in peace. Okay. And then a two morale check for everybody else. Leader first. Morale check. Two. He breaks in the ELRs. We said it was a four. Uh, yep. So he breaks in ELRs. Uh, ELR. And breaks. And the other dude. Passes. There you go, and he, he prep fired now. All right. Hmm. He prep fired. He has nobody to fire at. Well, he does. He can fire it here. Uh, because he did lose his arc. Um, ideally, I'd like to fire on the tank. Now, I'm not certain if I have loss. And I think it, my loss would clip this building here. And so let's take a loss, uh, a loss check and see if we do have fire or not. Oh, it actually clicks this building here. So now I gotta fire the tank. I gotta fire the AT gun. But guess what? If I get right, nothing bad happened. 
I got great, so he didn't fire. And there's no other viable target, really. So let's go on to movement. Now, as the Soviet player, you really wanted to knock this guy out. Uh, and due to your poor sights and your, your, your poor gunnery skills, uh, you, you missed it. You missed the, 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 at that range, you had to get in close and personal to get him out. So you missed the dude. But you did get an acquisition. You can't fire with being cruise exposed with this tank because uh, it's a restricted turret. Um, I'm not sure if that rule exists in in uh, Star Kit, but it does in ASL. Uh, and you really want to hit this guy. So you're keeping an eye on him. But he wants to move because he just determined that, you know what? It ain't worth it, Jack. And maybe he wants to, what he wants to do is move out of your sight uh, and uh, avoid being killed. All right. So he starts for one. At this point, the Soviet player can decide to fire uh, because you know he's going to try and move out of your sights. So, so you have to decide whether you want to fire on him or uh, wait and see and see if he, by some reason, uh, insane reason, he decides to come closer to you. Uh, you don't know his intent. So, uh, what is he going to do? Let's let's roll on it on it and see if um, and say uh, an odd number with a one d six. The Soviet player chooses to uh, fire on him, and an even number, he, it's a uh, wait and see. Even wait and see. So we we declared one to start. The Soviet player says, forget it, I'm not going to fire, and now two to there. Now what happens to the Zach? He didn't do anything to lose his Zach. He moved, and it's a small act, it's not an area act. If there was an area acquisition there, the area acquisition is targeting the location, therefore that area acquisition stays where it is but this is a small act it's a vehicular target type act so it follows does now the next question you have to ask is do i still have lost one i believe it's a free line of sight check so you do with uh two hindrances now you really have to think about whether or not you want to fire at him Remember, he only expended two movement factors in your line of sight. Um, and I, let's say the intent of the German player is to bring his, his, his uh, uh, tank here to, so you can lose the acquisition. So he goes three to change covered art. Now you know his intent is to get out of your line of sight so your act will stay there. Now you really want to fire at it. So we have an example of the act following the target actually from here to there. He moved three um, movement points in your line of sight. That's going to make a, a difference in uh, your dice roll modifiers. And he's more or less announcing his intent to get out of your view because the 76L can turn this guy into a split of the reins. So now we're saying we're going to fire. We announce that we're firing in the vehicular target type. Let's take a loss check. And he's in Q3. That is a range of 10 hexes. And uh, the Target is 70, uh, 76, well, the target, the fire is a 76L, Soviet player. All right. So let's take a look at the two hit table. Uh, 
Russia, 76L. Here, vehicular target type. Scroll across. Is a base 8 at a range of 7 to 12. Okay, base 8. I am buttoned up. That's a plus 1. Which is... Here, case 13. I have a minus one acquisition. That is how it factored in. Good. And the other one uh, that comes into play is the target-based uh, DRMs, um, which is the uh, minus one acquisition. And he was three or less in my line of sight. One to start, two, three. So that's another plus three. And plus two, um, plus two, uh, because of the hindrances. So that nets out to a three to hit, which is pretty bad. Pretty bad, I suppose. Yep, three to hit. So I got this motion versus motion or moving vehicle at less than or equal to three to plus three. Uh, DRMs. So a, f a five to hit. No. A three to hit. Base eight plus one minus one plus three plus two. Um, to hit. Did I break that? No. That's a pure miss. So this now becomes uh, a minus two act and he fired he first fired and now four to there and does the act follow let's do the line of sight check nope and he that act stays there it's up to the player here to re determine whether to take it off or not um, or, so he, he went uh, one to start, two, three to change cover arc, four, five, and six to stop, delay to 12. Now, let's talk about this acquisition. It remains there. It's up to this player to determine whether he wants to take it off the board or not. But if another vehicle, or vehicle comes through this hex, he can use that act to intensify on that hex. And this minus two act will probably negate the plus two modifier for intensifier. So that is my little example of um, acquisition gain and loss. Was it exhaustive? No. Um, but, you know, after this video, read over the rules. Preferably with a little stimulant like coffee or Earl Grey tea. You'll get a, a better understanding of it. And um, with practice, practice makes that perfect, right? Now, with that said, there's a couple of other items that I, I'd like to add. I'm just going to pause for a moment. Yeah, I'd like to add a couple of things for, uh, with respect to the previous video I did with respect to skulking. Uh, let me clarify, and if I wasn't perfectly clear in, in the uh, previous video, in, in my books, there's nothing wrong with skulking. It's a perfectly legitimate, um, uh, legitimate um, uh, tactic. Of course, there are tactics to uh, avoid it, minimize it, and abate it. Uh, a good example is Jim Bishop's um, uh, uh, latest blog that talks about uh, the key element to um, to um, uh, how you play as an, the attacker to to minimize um, uh, the effects of skulking. I highly recommend that you find the article and read it. Now, there was a comment uh, made by another YouTube user by the name uh, or alias of JS. I like to read it to you because 
uh, either the either YouTube deleted it or the actual user deleted it. I'm not sure. I certainly did not delete it, but I got an email notification of it. And I said, this is an excellent comment. So a simple utilization of actual period infantry tactics voids the skulking game mechanic altogether. This is to take one object objective at a time, applying a maneuver force, a close fire uh, support force, a heavy weapon support element, and a reserve on that single point moving from one short obje objective to the next. Now that's a perfectly legitimate uh, tactic. I wish I became a master of using this this um, element. Uh, however, I'm not claiming to be a master and I'm still learning. And there's a lot to learn. As you can see, I had some doubts in just doing this video alone. So that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, and, and do look up uh, Jim Bishop's uh, video. Um, yeah. So everything is fine and dandy in that respect. Uh, I certainly did see that uh, people are triggered with respect to um, to skulking. I find it to be just part of the game. Uh, and certainly my opponent used a lot more skills than, than, um, than skulking and uh, the element of, of luck uh, was in there. Now, long story short, is um, I, I don't think you guys would learn much about my from my victories. You would learn more about my defeats. I don't shy away from sharing my defeats and my victories uh, with you, and more so my defeats and my uh, victories. So that's what this channel is about. It's about my journey. I'm not claiming to be a, a master. But I certainly enjoy sharing my knowledge with each and every one of you. And I thank you for your support. The previous video roughly reached near 200 views, which in my book, given the small community that we are, is a, is a success. And it's a, I'm successful because of you and nobody else. Uh, now, with that said, I'm, I've, I've reached nearly an hour and I try to keep my videos uh, 20 minutes or, or shorter. Um, it is what it is, can't say much, but I always like to uh, uh, take the time uh, to thank all my viewers. And again, this channel, much to my surprise, has reached a new level of subscribers of slightly over 530, which is, in my books, amazing. Uh, I, I don't think I'm going to receive a, a silver plaque anytime soon for doing these types of videos, but it's certainly... Uh, fun and enjoyable. It's a fun way to spend an hour of my time um, reinforcing my own knowledge of the rules. Um, and I'd like to say again, thanks to everyone that watches these videos. Um, and thanks to the, uh, the young folks that watch it as well. And another shout out to the La uh, Laval uh, Panthers. Um, in the previous game that they played, they, they nearly made a comeback. And uh, the one before that it was a, an astounding victory. Um, and it's, a, a, it's an amazing, uh, it's an amazing, um, uh, it's really amazing to watch them. I can't show you any pictures here on my channel, but you can st st still go to the Laval Senior Academy Panthers Instagram page and give them your likes. Uh, Shout out to, to George, a happy belated birthday buddy, and keep up the good work. You're an amazing quarterback. My son is an amazing dude too as well. Shout out to Yanni. Um, also shout out to the folks uh, in Europe. Uh, bonjour Pascal, uh, merci pour faire une subs subscription à mon ch channel. Thank you, merci. And thank you uh, uh, one and all. Thanks. Take care. Bye.